Praise the living Jesus. My name is Ariel Laure Lua, the prayer coordinator of this online prayer ministry, and this is Praying Eagles Network. Praying Eagles Network. Praying Eagles Network is an online prayer ministry where we fellowship together online to seek the face of the Almighty God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ with the help of Holy Spirit. Coming live from Lagos State, Nigeria, I know that as you join us today, as we fellowship together, as we pray together, to seek the face of the Almighty God, the Lord will arise and intervene on that matter. According to Luke 21, verse 13, we say, He shall turn to you for a testimony. That matter, that marital matter, that financial matter, that emotional matter, that matter concerning your business, concerning your career, concerning your health, concerning your loved one, it shall turn to you today for a testimony in the name of Jesus. I pray for you, sir. I pray for you, ma. One more time. That that matter, this very day, the Lord will turn it to you for a testimony in the name of Jesus. So why not sit down, get ready for a defined encounter, for a life transforming testimony. You are welcome, Jesus' name. I appreciate him worshiping him. May heaven open upon each and every one of us. Heavens of mercy, heavens of favor, heavens of lifting, heavens of revelation, heavens of divine encounter. May he open upon us tonight in the name of Jesus. That which look impossible, everything that look impossible unto you, everything that look impossible that cannot be done, everything that medical people are saying cannot be done, everything that our people are saying it cannot be done. Tonight, as you and I come before the Almighty God, may God encounter us and bring light unto them in the name of Jesus. I said, may God encounter you, may God encounter me, and bring light unto those things in the name of Jesus. I decree, I declare again, those matter, those issues, the medical people are saying this cannot be done. It is impossible. Every issue that our family are looking at us and uh, to them is like this cannot be possible again. As soon as I have come before the Almighty God tonight, I pray for you, sir. I pray for you, ma. May God make those things, may God bring light out of them in the name of Jesus. May the light of God shine from them in the name of Jesus. The light of God, 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 out of everything that you are going on. Out of everything that you have been praying unto God concerning, out of those issues that you have been presenting them unto the Almighty God, I pray for you tonight. May the light of God come out of them in the name of Jesus. May testimony proceed out of them in the name of Jesus. May light come out of them in the name of Jesus. May testimony come out of them in the name of Jesus. This is it. May you have received to say, this is what the Lord God have done in my life. I pray for you, sir. I pray for you, man. This season, may your family gather together to celebrate God concerning that matter in the name of Jesus. Concerning that issue that look impossible. Concerning that issue that you yourself, you know that humanly speaking, this cannot be possible. Out of those issues, out of that matter, out of that issue, may testimony come out in the name of Jesus. It was impossible for Abraham at his age to father a child. 
It was impossible for, for Abraham at his age to father a child. It was impossible for Sarah at her age to conceive again. But hear me, sir. Hear me, man. When the Lord God said, it is time, it is time. I decree, I declare concerning you, sir. I decree, I declare concerning you, man. It is your time in the name of Jesus. It is your time in the name of Jesus. It is your time in the name of Jesus. It is your sissy in the name of Jesus. It is your time in the name of Jesus. It is your sissy in the name of Jesus. It is your time in the name of Jesus. Please, those of us on the online church, I believe you can all hear me. One more time. I decree concerning that person. You are looking at the environment. You are looking at everything about it. And it looks impossible. You are just using faith. You are just using faith. Because you don't want people to tell you that uh, all these past years that you have been with God, what, are, what shows the result. But hear me, sir. Hear me, man. Jeremiah the book of Jeremiah said, out of them shall proceed. Out of you, out of that issue. Out of what you are passing through right now. Out of what you are passing through right now. Out of that issue on ground. Out of what you are passing through. Shall come for the force of joy. The force of gladness. The force of bridegroom. Jeremiah 33, verse 11. Out of what you are passing through shall come for the force of joy, the force of gladness, the force of bride, the force of bridegroom, the force of them that shall say, Praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And of every one of you, every members of this ministry that shall bring the sacrifice of praise the sacrifice of praise when we are talking about sacrifice of praise it's not the offering it's not the tithe it's not the seed no this the sacrifice of praise is the word of your mouth from the depth of your heart say this is what the lord have done for me come and see what the lord god have done for me come and see what god have done in my marriage Come and see what God has done in my business. Come and see what God has done in my career. So I declare, I declare, if you can join me, if you can agree with me this night to say amen. Out of that matter, out of that issue, shall come forth the force of thanksgiving and uh, the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. For the Lord God will cause you to return will cause to return the captivity of the land as at the first said the lord that means as at the first when god created you when there was no issue when there was no error when there was no manipulation when there was no attack when your life when everything about you was just perfect just perfect just perfect Define restoration, total restoration. Define restoration, total restoration. Define restoration, total restoration. I declare, I declare tonight, the Lord will restore you in the name of Jesus. The Lord will restore you in the name of Jesus. There shall be restoration. 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 That 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 shall be restoration. In the name of Jesus. That shall be restoration. In the name of Jesus. Jeremiah 51, verse 36. Jeremiah 51, verse 36. Therefore, thus said the Lord, behold. I will plead thy cause. Not my cause. God is not talking about himself, but he's talking about you. 
please uh, please for those of us on the online church i need somebody to let me make a comment there so that i will know that you can hear me very well amen thus said the lord behold i will plead thy cause i will plead your cause what is the meaning that means god is saying it will be your advocate he will be your lawyer to plead your cause and take fingers for thee and i will dry up a sea and make a spring dry praise the lord there are two there are three things here in this scripture which god is talking about you man there are three things here which god is talking about you sir there are three things here which god is talking about your life the activities you God is saying that you are about to do in your life. What are those things? Number one. Somebody say number one. Somebody say number one. Okay, thank you, man. Somebody say number one. He said, behold, I will plead your cause. Before those who are harassing you, before those powers that are stronger than you, before those who are enslaving you, because those, before those who are saying, in this business, in this arena, on this mountain, we dictate, we rule, we give order. The Lord is saying, I will plead your cause. So I decree, I declare concerning you, sir, concerning you, man. You can say it louder, amen. Tonight, let the Lord God plead your cause in the name of Jesus. Before those power who are claiming authority over your life, before those power who are claiming authority over your marriage, over your business, over your career, over the work of your hand. Let the Lord God arise and plead your cause in the name of Jesus. Hear me, sir. Hear me, man. I have shared the testimony some years ago. When I came alive to Christ, and instead of things to get better, things were getting worse. And I put myself on prayer and fasting. For those of you who have been waiting upon the Lord God from uh, the beginning of this month, today is the fifth day, and we are ending it today. Hear me, your, your prayer, your fasting, I want to assure you they are not in vain. They are not in vain. They are not in vain. After a series of revelation that I always find myself in the spiritual courtroom, and the final one, the judge there said, young man, all these people that are laying allegations against you, they are your father's people. I will never forget that revelation. I don't know them. I don't know what they are saying. But they are just shouting. Woo, 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 woo. They are just angry. They are just fighting. They are just... And it was, it was, it was like 100 against one. And the judge said, what do you have to say? All these people are your father's people. I, I could never forget that statement. What do you have to say to defend yourself? And I was just crying. How can I defend, my, defend myself before 100 people that are over 100? elderly people. When well, I could not say anything, the judge was about to pronounce his judgment and a man appeared. And when the man appeared and he said, I am his judge. I am his lawyer. I want to plead his case. And immediately, the judge did not allow him to talk. The judge just, all those people who have been laid allegation, the judge said, no, I cannot judge him again because Inside this court, I am the judge. But the moment you people leave this place, he is going to deal with me. He has power over me. He can do an undo to me. And the judge said, they should release me. Release everything that belongs to me. Number three, they should never, never bring me to his court again. Spiritual court is real. Hello, sir. Spiritual court is real. And in that revelation, they took me to my father's uh, uh, town. There was a rock there. The rock is still there today. And the man that led that, that, that took me there, just pointed his hand to the rock. And he said, and the command opened. And there was a gate. And a big truck came out. And the man said, take the key. And every property with the uh, uh, truck. Said, these are the things that will cease from you. And I was looking at him. And I took the key. And he said, close. The gate closed again and the rock closed and nobody can see that that, 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 that there's a gate there. And I was looking at the rock. I was looking at the man. 
And the man now said, is it for me? And the man said, the man that took me there, he said, every child from this town, when we seize anything from them, when we seize their glory, when we seize their virtue, we lock it up in this, inside this room. This is the spiritual strong room. And he said, your lawyer is greater than every one of us. And he will say, my lawyer. He said, are you not the one that called him? Jesus, the moment he said Jesus, everything, everything fabricated and uh, since that day, I repeat hundred times, they have not born anyone well to, to summon me to spiritual court. I'm talking about almost 20 years now. Let them try it. If my lawyer will not deal with them. I will plead your cause. So hear me, Sayama. Tonight, on that matter, on that issue, on that affliction, Jesus is saying he wants to plead your cause. So I declare, I declare to you, sir, to you, man, to your marriage, to your business, to your career, every one of you that they are attacking your head, tonight, let the Lord God plead your cause in the name of Jesus. Let God plead your cause. Let God plead your cause. When God plead your cause, it means God is fighting for you. It means God is defending you. I declare, I declare, any one of you that you are under the yoke of satanic affliction, every one of you that the power forces from your father's house, your mother's house, your healer's house, your environment, they are saying, no, you cannot have a major breakthrough. Every one of you that there are some satanic elders in your father's house, in your mother's house, in your healer's house, in your environment, or around the place where you want business, or oh, those satanic elders in the church, those satanic leaders in the church, those satanic leaders in the religious circle, that they are saying no, because you are not bowing down to them, we will afflict you. Tonight, let the Lord God arise and fight for you in the name of Jesus. Let God fight for you. 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 Every power, every parent in the house, every power that wants to use your children to punish you. Every power that wants to use your children to punish you. We have tried all possible best, but we cannot get you, we cannot capture you. The only way is for us to just attack the side. When we attack any of his children, yes, we capture him. Anyone that wants you to cry, anyone that wants you to mock, anyone that wants to use your children to afflict you, Tonight, let God arise and fight for you in the name of Jesus. Anyone that wants to use your head to afflict you, or anyone that is using your head to afflict you, tonight, let God arise and fight for you in the name of Jesus. Let God fight for you. 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 Let God arise and fight for you tonight in the name of Jesus. I want you to shout loud and clear. Say tonight, the Lord will arise and fight for me. Can you shout loud, loud and clear? Say tonight, the Lord will arise and fight for me. The Lord will arise and fight for my marriage. The Lord will arise and fight for my business. Say concerning my earth, the Lord will arise and fight for me. What about the work of your hand? Say concerning the work of my hand, the Lord will arise and fight for me. No lift of your hand. So Lord my God, tonight arise and fight for me. 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 Decree and declare. Let God arise and fight for you tonight. In the name of Jesus. Let God arise and fight for you. So Lord my God, arise and fight for me. 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 Every business owner in the house, can you lift up your hand and declare and declare? So long my God, tonight, arise and fight for me. Arise and fight for me. Concerning the work of my hand, concerning my business, concerning my career, in that office, arise, oh Lord, fight for me. Why not declare and declare? Let God arise and fight for you. Let God 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 fight for you. I want you to declare and declare. Say, Lord my God, arise and fight for me. In the name of Jesus. Arise and fight for me. In the name of Jesus. 
Arise and fight for me. Can you declare and declare it? So long my God, arise and fight for me. Concerning my marriage, arise and fight for me. Concerning my business, arise and fight for me. Concerning my career, arise and fight for me. In Jesus' name we are praying. <clears throat> See, why many times when I'm receiving prayer like this, why I always ask business owners, business people to pray it more than any other people? If only God open your eyes and let you see what is going on. It's not everybody that love with you are happy. There are many people that try to establish business, but they are not able. There are many people who enter into that environment before you. You met them there that have been there over the years, but they did not prosper. There is no tangible result. You, you just come suddenly and you are having a major breakthrough. And they'll be greeting you, congratulations, ah, the God will thank God you, and you two, you are smiling with them. Smiling with them. If you know what they are saying, if you know what they are, what they are, they are heart desire. The wrong is my friend, he may be online now. He left his pastor, no issue. He will present himself before him. Daddy, this is what God has said. The Lord said I should move forward to go and start my own ministry and do the work of God. But I want you to help me pray about it. Help me pray about it so that you'll be able to direct me on what next to do. And the man said, okay, his father in the Lord said, okay, tomorrow come. <laughs> I will pray. Come. So the guy was happy. I have served my master faithfully. So he's going to pray. He's going to receive the word from God so that he'll be able to release me and bless me. Pray for me. The guy is not asking for anything. He just he just wants to submit himself. It was then that he knew that uh, <laughs> the second day when he appeared, he appeared before tribunal. You know, Tribuna, he appeared before elders in council and they begin to hold poor record. Why he must not go? Why did he have to come and say this? Why did he have to come and say that? Why did he so rude? Why is all this? Why is all that? Who is the God? Who are you that God will send you? Instead of you to be, to be serving, be, be a slave forever. And the man began to curse him. Did not only curse him was causing anybody that will come and support him. When he told me, I said, just be happy. Just be happy. He saw what he's doing. He showed you you are able to know so that you'll be able to pray. What about if you did not do it, if you did not know? My pastor shared this testimony with me. My pastor shared this testimony with me. He said one of his friends went to the mountain. Just like you are always running to the mountain. May God help you. I'm not saying I go to the mountain to pray. I go anywhere I like. But uh, 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 I'm always careful. His friend went to the mountain to pray. His pastor told him that he wants to travel. Just like living outside the country. So he now told him, Sir, on so 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 day, before you come back, I will go to so 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 mountain to go and pray. He said, Okay. He went to that mountain. He went to a mountain. So as he was climbing the mountain, you know there's only this pastors, Baba Roke, the prophet of the mountain. And so when he was there, the man was inside the house. The pastor on that mountain was inside the office, inside the room. So he was talking, uh, you come to this mountain to pray, yes, why are you here from your church? I'm from Sosu town. Okay, who is your pastor there? Ah, that your pastor, that your child, that your pastor. Is he not one of those people that always enslave people? And the man said, no, my pastor is okay. Do not do that? Ah, your pastor must be one of those who always use shams. He said, no. That man on the mountain was saying negative things, asking negative things about his pastor. So he keeps saying, no, my pastor is not like that. My pastor is a good man. Unknown to him, his pastor is inside with that man. 
<laughs> a sincere with that man. It was after the man have asked all manners of questions. And this one keeps saying, no, my pastor is not like that. He said, ah, maybe you are defending. He said, no, I'm not defending him. But my pastor is a right man before God. And the man I opened the door. God save you. You should have said negative things about me. He said, no, need that. Let me pray for you. You know, if you need that, you close his eyes. The moment he set forth his right hand. So as the right hand is coming, he closed his eyes. As he closed his eyes, the man withdrew the right hand and placed his left hand on his head. Left hand. You know the meaning. Right hand is the hand of blessing. Left hand is the hand of course. It's no longer what you are saying. It's what that hand brings. But it was those people that were there. They have to told him later. Oga, okay, why do you need that for that man? He changed his hand. He placed left hand on you. He said, no. You don't show him the picture that he took secretly. Not everybody, business people, I've shown you two incidents now. Not everybody are happy. Mrs. Ledea, I see your comment on the, the YouTube. Not, not everybody are happy that you are running that school and uh, God is helping you with that school. Not everybody. Daddy, I, uh, Apostle, Daddy Aguda, Daddy, it's not everybody. You met people in that village. There are, there are people who are in the gym of that village. When you enter there, because God, God asked you to go to that place. There are people who are in the gym and God called them, but they refuse to answer. They are there when you enter that place. So after you break the ground spiritually, and God is now moving. Now they are now saying, uh, why you met us here? You are a stranger here. You think that they will be happy? You think that they will be happy? When they see all the land, all the land that you own there, you bought it with, with, with your own money, with your own sweat. You bought it from their hand. You bought it. You pay them. But when they enter, when they see the land, you think that they will be happy? Daddy, sir, let me ask you, sir. That land that God has given you there, you pay for it. How many of those indigenous have that kind of land? Apart from where you have the school, apart from where you have the church, apart from the residential area, the one outside, that open field alone, that open field alone, you know the cost, you know the value of that land. So you think that people will be happy. You think that other, other ministers will be happy. You think that uh, uh, the indigenous, those who are, who are born and breed there, and they are passing, you think that they will be happy? When they have sold all their land, sold all their inheritance, and you, a stranger there, God is enlarging you, you know, think that they will be happy. So how will they, how will they, how will they, how will they? Lift up your hand. Say, Lord my God, arise tonight. Fight for me. In the name of Jesus, concerning my marriage, concerning my business, concerning my career, so Lord my God, arise and fight for me, concerning my children, arise and fight for me, concerning my earth, arise and fight for me, can you declare and declare, let God fight for you, let God arise and fight for you, in the name of Jesus, before the elders of the land, those who position themselves as the elders, so Lord, arise and fight for me, arise, oh Lord, fight for me, Fight for me, O oh Lord. Arise and fight for me. 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 He said, I will plead your cause. So long, my God. Arise and fight for me tonight. Fight for me. As I go into the second half of the year, fight for me. Every party comforting me. Every power comforting me. Every principality comforting me. Lord, arise and fight for me. 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 Can you declare and declare? Let the Lord go arise and fight for you tonight. Let God arise and fight for you. So long my God, arise and fight for me. Fight for me tonight. Arise and fight for me. Arise and fight for me. Arise and fight for me. I want you to present your children before the Almighty God. Let God fight for your children. Let God fight for your husband. Let God fight for your wife. Declare and declare. Lord, I 
there's a fact for me. In Jesus' name, we are praying. And the next one said, I'm, I'm praying from Jeremiah 51 36. Jeremiah 51 36. Jeremiah 51 36. Then the second one said, And take vengeance for day. Then the next one, I will dry up a sea. The sea they are talking about are affliction. The sea they are represent affliction. The seed there represent problem. The seed there represent affliction. Praise the Lord. I believe it's okay now. Thank you, Jesus. The sea, I will dry up a sea. The seed there represent affliction. It represents problem. It represents the crisis that enemy are bombarding you with. As they bombarding your marriage, they are bombarding your business. As they bombarding your business, they are bombarding your career. I will dry up and see that affliction shall be dry up. So long I go, every affliction, every sea of the enemy, Lord, dry it up. In the name of Jesus, let it dry up. 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 Can you declare and declare that, oh Lord my God, the sea, the affliction of the enemy against my life, against my marriage, against my business, against my career, against my wife, against my children. Lord, let it dry up. Enough is enough. As I go into the second half of this year, let the sea of the enemy, let it dry up. Let it dry up. Let it dry up. Let it dry up. Can you pray that prayer? So Lord my God, dry up the sea of the enemy. The affliction of the enemy. No, let it dry up. 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 Are you praying, my brother? Are you praying? Declare, declare. Let it see dry up. The sea of the enemy. So long, my God. Let it dry up. 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 The sea of the enemy. The affliction of the enemy against my life, against my marriage, against my business, against my career. C S E A S E A. You see in that scripture. No, let it dry up. Jeremiah 51, verse 36. The C C S E A. The sea of the enemy. The affliction of the enemy. The problem of the enemy. The crisis of the enemy. That the enemy are firing the arrow into my life. The of sickness, arrows of downfall, arrows of failure, arrows of death, arrows of setback, arrows of affliction. No, let it dry up. Enough is enough. 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 In Jesus' name, we are praying. Let me show you the activities of that sea. Let me show you the activities of that water. Revelation 12. Revelation 12. You know, we always need verse 11 and we stop there. And we were came in by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony and the love Lord that life unto death. Please move forward. Verse 14, verse 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man's child. He, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man's child. Verse 14. And to the woman who are giving two ways of a great eagle, that she may fly into the wilderness, into a place where she is nourished for a time, and time and half a time, from the face of the serpent. Yet, look at verse 15. And the serpent cast out, the woman ran away from him. Yet, verse 15, the serpent, the enemy, cast out from his mouth water as a flood after the woman that it may cause her to be carried away of the flood. This woman tried to run away from Satan. This woman tried to run away from the enemy. Yet, the enemy see fire, the arrows of flood, arrows of affliction, that the affliction will carry her away. Every affliction of the enemy, program into your life. Program
program into your marriage, program into your business, program into your career, in order to sweep you away, in order to sweep your marriage, in order to sweep your business, in order to sweep your career, let the affliction dry up, let the water dry up, let the affliction dry up, let the water dry up, let the affliction dry up, let the water dry up. Do you see the activities of the sea now? From the mouth of the of the Satan. So that we carry that woman away. So that we carry you away. All those problems. Back to back. Back to back. Back to back. Before you leave one, there's another one. You are only after your husband. There's problem with the shine. Before you finish with the one with the shine. There's problem with your head. Before you finish the one with your head. There's... Ha ha. Can you do why now? Why? The enemy just want to make sure that they finish you. But hear me, the good news is this. Instead of them to finish you, they are going to finish themselves because they are going to, they are going to call, enter into a costly mistake and costly error. Take it again. So, Lord my God, every water of affliction, I can't hear you. Every water of affliction, every water of problem, program to carry me away, program to carry my marriage away, program to sweep my health away, program to sweep my children away, say in the name of Jesus, dry up tonight, 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 can you declare and declare, let this water of affliction dry up, in the name of Jesus, let it dry up, let it dry up, let it dry up, that water of affliction, command it to dry up. Enough is enough. Command it to dry up. 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 That water of affliction, say in the name of Jesus, dry up by fire. 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 Every water of affliction in my life. Every water of affliction in my marriage. Every water of affliction in my business. Dry up by fire. Command it to dry up. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' name, we are praying. The second scripture we are going to pray tonight. The second scripture we are going to pray tonight before I decree and declare upon us. And we enter gloriously into the second half of the year. You know this prayer from day one. We are just preparing ourselves. We are just warming up for the second half of the year. Job 28, verse 3. Job 28, verse 3. Please open your Bible to Job 28, verse 3. Concerning this ministry, Penny Goose Network, anyone, either born of a woman, or they carry him or out of that woman, or he falls from somewhere, or his principality or rulers of darkness, that have been saved from the pit of hell, to monitor this ministry, physical, spiritual, or online. Anyone on earth to monitor this ministry. Number one, before I declare and declare, I'm just sorry for you. I'm just sorry for them. Anyone on assignment to release water of affliction against this ministry. Anyone assignment. On, on assignment to silence this ministry, any agent of hatred, any agent of wickedness, any agent from the pit of hell that is against the progress of this ministry, I decree, I declare, let the word of God, let the fire of Holy Ghost, let the fire of Holy Ghost, let it destroy them in the name of Jesus. The Bible said, Yeah, me, sir, yeah, me, man. The Lord told Moses himself that he created two vessels. Some vessels unto honor, some vessels unto destruction. He created some people like you, like me. He created us as vessels of honor to show forth his glory. At the same time, he created some vessels, the Bible calls it vessels of dishonor. And the Bible now said, to show forth his anger. That was how the Bible put it. Two vessels. First of honor to show forth his glory and the other vessel of dishonor to show forth his wrath. Just like Pharaoh. And he used Pharaoh as an example. So here, Mr. Hayama, there is no preaching that Pharaoh will hear that will make him change. Because God 
Pharaoh was created for perdition. Pharaoh was created for destruction. So he must always do something that will make him that will make his life to be destroyed. And a man like Saul that was created as just of honor, he and Mr. Herman, let him do no matter what that man does. At the end of the day, he's going to give his life to Christ. He will give, surely give his life to Christ. And he turn a new leaf. That is first of honor. Every first of dishonor that God has created to show forth his, his wrath and the assignment to monitor, to attack, to pull down. May the fire of God destroy them in the name of Jesus. You are saying, Pastor, is it good to pray like that? I'll show you. The first rule of dishonor, there's nothing you can do. There's no prayer of repentance that you can no there is no preaching you can preach for them. They are just created for destruction. So before God will destroy them, don't let them destroy you. Otherwise, they will destroy you. They will destroy you. Job 28, verse 3. Are you there? Job 28, verse 3. He set an end to darkness. He set an end to darkness. And search out all perfection. The stone of darkness and the shadows of death. What is the meaning? Number one. He, the, another one he said, Deserted that means put. You put an end to darkness. Every work of darkness, every activities of darkness, failure, delay, setback, postponement, sickness, infirmity, pain. He put an end to them. Number one. Number two, he search at all perfection. He search your, your life, your home, your marriage, your business, your career. He search everything to, that concerns you to look to be sure that everything are perfect. That everything are perfect. Your marriage, nothing must cause pain. Your business, nothing must give you a dick. Then number three. What was he searching for? He was searching for stones of darkness. Those little, little things that will cause problems. And the shadows of death. Those things that will put an end to your life. That will put an end to your work. He was searching for them in your life. In order to remove them. You want to remove them. Because anything that represents darkness must not be found in your life. So back to the first one. You put an end to darkness. If you put an end to darkness, any altar of darkness, any seed of darkness, anything that will represent darkness, pain must not be found. So you are going to declare and declare, Oh Lord my God, as I go into this second half of the year, put an end to activities of darkness in my life. Put an end to activities of darkness in my home. Put an end to activities of darkness in my marriage. Concerning my eyes, let an end come to activities of darkness. Can we begin to declare and declare? So, Lord my God, put an end to work of darkness in my life, in my home, in my marriage, in my business, in my career. Let an end come to the work of darkness in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord my God, put an end to the work of darkness in my life, in my home, in my marriage, in my business, in my career. Declare and declare. Let an end come to the work of darkness in the name of Jesus. So, Lord my God, put an end to work of darkness in my life, in my home, in my marriage, in my business, in my career. Let an end come to the work of darkness. Enough is enough. Lord, put an end to the work of darkness. Activities of darkness, put an end to it. Activities of delay, denial, rejection, failure. Lord, put an end to it in the name of Jesus. A portion of good things. Lord, put an end to it. Delay, postponement of blessing. Put an end to it. Can you declare, declare? Lord, God, put an end to the work of darkness in your life in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are praying. It has search out all perfection in your life, your marriage, your woman, your husband, your children. Including your head, your head from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, everything must be perfect. Those of you on sick bed, please, I want you to pray this. Those of you with medical issue, I want you to pray this one very well. It search out all perfection. God is the one that created you. You know why He created you. I was listening, watching one documentary on. Um, uh, I don't know what they call this about men. Who are adults? I can't really remember now. There's this uh, issue that they always have, especially the black people, that men that they have to uplift them 
50, 60, 70, it's a common something among the black uh, people. So I was listening to one uh, uh, professor, Sojourn, in that field. Um, and he said something. The uncle man now asked, why that thing, that when you remove it, what is the effect? He said, no effect. Because that thing so is attached to, to the main thing of that of men. Now I said, oh, if they remove it, will the man still be able to perform? Say yes. If they remove it, it had nothing to do with that man. It did not remove anything and it did not add anything. And the uncle man now asked one question. He said, so why is that thing? What is the function of that thing in the body of a man? And the surgeon, so professor from America, the surgeon said, nobody knows the function. The, that thing is not, there's no particular purpose, no function. You know, when they remove it, the man is seen man. So, you know, what, what, so what is the work of that thing there? The man said, nobody knows. And I said, it's only God that God just put it there. For what? The surgeon said, nobody knows. Well, here, Mr. They don't know. But there's a reason why God created that thing there. There's a reason. There's a reason. The surgeon, the old professor, say nobody know why. Because there's nothing he's doing. To them, America, there's nothing he's doing. But if God has put it there, know that there's something that this thing must do. Why am I saying this? God is the one that created you from the crown of your head, the air, to the sole of your feet. So you know how he created you. You know how the perfection, how he put everything there. This our God is too much. It's too much. Another documentary that I was watching, they were talking about small intestine and large intestine that when they are doing the operation, they have to bring everything out. So when they were saying that and they showed some video, I was telling myself, by the time they put it back, how are they going to arrange it? And the man just said something that blew my mind. The uncle man now, they, they, they now asked, so what will now happen to you? How will you it? How will you arrange it back? How will you know the, how to arrange it? The man said, no, we don't arrange it back. Nobody can arrange it. What we are doing, after we have done the surgery, the surgery, cut this, stitch this, the small intestine and the large intestine, we just bring it, just like that, and drop it inside the uh, canal, inside the stomach of that person. So the man said, how will you form? He said, those things will form by themselves. They will array themselves. That long pipe, intestine, the long one, the, the, the short one, that they will array themselves. I said, wow, this is work of God. This is work of God. No matter the health issue that you are having, God is able to fix it and he will fix it tonight in the name of Jesus. He will fix it tonight in the name of Jesus. Perfection is coming. Perfection is coming. Perfection is coming. Perfection is coming. And if it is your marriage, hear me, sir, hear me, man. God is the one that instituted the instituted marriage. The first marriage was established by God. The first marriage was pronounced by God. The marriage, marriage, marriage institution was created by God himself. It is not good for a man to be alone. I will make him a help meet, help meet, help meet, suitable, adaptable. God is the one that created you. You know what is missing in your life. So you will bring somebody that will compliment. We are not in competition to compliment, to compliment, to compliment. I will bring somebody that will compliment you. Where you are lacking, that person will fit in so that there will be perfection. Please see that Lord. And it is the work of your hand. Yeah, me, sir. Yeah, me, man. The glory of God is the first man that established business. God, yes, you hear me. Business. God is the one that established business. God loves business. God is after man to profit in business. He created the garden. Beautiful. But you know that wheat will grow. So he employed another man to till the ground. Is that not employment? Is that not labor? He employed Adam. He created Adam. And he employed him into the garden. If you are not here, somebody must be here to till the ground to make sure that everything are in order. So he employed Adam 
to start working in that in that uh, farm in his farm is that not business that is his company the farm is god's company so you employ a farmer that will see to it so god is one that the first man that instituted uh, what they call business anything you call business god is the first man so we are mr ayama are you having this are you having issue in your business the god that instituted business the first business god that employed the first uh, 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 man to work in his farm he will fix that business for you he will bring the right man that will work in that organization the right man that will till that business that will till the ground god will bring him in the name of jesus praise the lord any area of your life get ready he said he search out all perfection explain all this because of that prayer just one prayer you are going to declare and declare oh Lord my god as i go into this seven the second half of the year perfect all that consign me in the name of jesus my marriage my business my career my ex my wife my children so Lord my god as i go into this second half of the year perfect all that concern me in the name of jesus let that be perfection let that be perfection let that be perfection let that be perfection can you begin to declare and declare that father as i go into this second half of the year perfect all that concern me in the name of jesus define perfection let that be perfection everything that concern me my life my own my marriage my business my career no perfect them let that be perfection let that be perfection. Let that be perfection. Let that be perfection. No perfect all that concern me. In the name of Jesus. Perfect the work of my hand. I present plenty good strength work before you. My Lord, my God. Perfect this ministry. In the name of Jesus. Perfect the work of my hand. This ministry. Let that be perfection. My life. Let that be perfection. My marriage. Let that be perfection. My act. Let that be perfection. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' name, we are praying. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Second Kings eight verse six. Second King, Second Kings chapter eight verse six. This was the story of the woman who was barren, and um, Elijah, Elisha restored, Elisha restored a dead son. You see the introduction in verse 1. Second Kings 8 verse 1. Then spake Elisha unto the woman, whose son he had restored to life, saying, Arise, and go down thy household, and so John will so ever. Now <coughs> comes John, for the Lord has called for a family, and he shall also come upon the land seven years. And the one arose and did as the servant of God have said. Verse 6. Let's go to verse 6. And when the king, after the seven years of famine, the woman returned back, and a land, a property, and will be taken by another person. And he went to the king to report. But at that time, they are talking about the Elisha and all the wonderful things that they have done. And they are just talking about the story of that woman. And Gehazi, uh, the servant of the prophet, saw the woman and he said, O king, Verse 5. Okay, this is the woman, and this is her son, whom Elisha restored to life. And verse 6. When the king asked the woman, she told him. So the king appointed unto her a certain officer. A certain officer say, Restore all. Somebody say, All. Restore all that was ours, and all the fruit of the land, since the day that she left the land, even until now. Full time restoration. She left seven years ago. Some people are farming on that land. Some people are using the land for seven years. And the king now raised an, uh, an officer. Go and restore all her property, everything that belongs to her, and you proceed for that seven years. They must pay this woman. They cannot just use her property. They cannot just be living in her house. They cannot just be using her land. They must pay for the past seven years. Praise the Lord. Tonight, I decree, I declare, the, the king said, restore all that is uh, everything that belongs to you in the hand of the enemy. The Lord will restore you in the name of Jesus. I'm riding it up. I'm riding up now. I just want to hear your, hear your amen. Your honor, 
your glory, your joy, your celebration, whatever the enemy has taken from you in the past six months, in the past seven years, let the Lord God restore you in the name of Jesus. I did not hear your amen. I say your glory, your honor, your joy, your breakthrough, your promotion, your fruitfulness, that the enemy, whatever the enemy has taken from you, has seized from you in the past six months, in the past seven years, let there be total restoration in the name of Jesus. Let there be total restoration in the name of Jesus. Let there be total restoration in the name of Jesus. Genesis 20, 14 to 17. The wife of Abraham was taken from him, but the Lord God appeared, and the Lord God caused the final restoration, and Sarah was restored back. I declare, I declare, every good thing that you have lost in that marriage, every good thing that the enemy has taken from you in that marriage, let the Lord God restore you in the name of Jesus. Genesis 40, 21, the butler was restored back to our original position. Every one of you that you have lost your position, that you have lost your work, that you have lost your job, I decree, I declare, let the Lord God restore you in the name of Jesus. Exodus 22, verse 1, Exodus 22, verse 1, the devil said, when a thief is caught, he must restore. There are three different kind of level. The first level, he must restore four times. If you take one, you must give you four. Another level, if you take one, you must restore five. Another level, if you take one, you must restore double. And then restore four. Another property must be five. Another property must to be two. I decree, I declare, concern every one of you. Whatever the spiritual enemy has taken from you, whatever the spiritual robbers have taken from you, whatever the spiritual thief has stolen from you, tonight, let there be restoration in the name of Jesus. Let there be restoration. 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 The vertical seas are so. The vertical seas are so. Anything violently taken. Anything violently taken. Anything deceitfully taken. The Bible said must be restored. Whatever the enemy have taken from you violently. Whatever they have used deceit to take from you. Tonight I declare, I declare, defy restoration in the name of Jesus. In the book of Ruth, Ruth was restored, and the Bible said, when, 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 when Ruth was restored, I joined on the soul, to the point that the people now say, you shall be, that the son that you are, shall be a restorer of your life, restorer of your life. One single testimony brought back life, brought back joy, brought back fifthly into the life of Ruth. I declare, I declare, whatever you have lost in the time past, and as a result of that loss, it's affecting your life, affecting your health, affecting everything that concerns you. I declare, I declare, let there be restoration of life in the name of Jesus. Your marriage, let there be restoration of life. Your business, let there be restoration of life. Your health, let there be restoration of life in the name of Jesus. 1 Samuel 7 14. 1 Samuel 7 14. The Bible said, the cities which the Philistines have taken from Israel were restored back. The city. The landed property which the enemy, the Philistine, has taken from Israel will restore back. Today, as we go into this second half of the year, every property, every landed property, every property, every office that the enemy has taken from you, from your marriage, from your home, let there be restoration in the name of Jesus. Second Samuel 9 for 7. Second Samuel 9 for 7. Mephibosheth in every stance was restored back unto him. Mephibosheth, the grandchild of Saul, King Saul. Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan. David said, everything that belongs to your grandfather, King Saul, shall be, I will make sure that you receive everything back. I declare, I declare, every one of you, that your inheritance has been taken from you. Especially those of you who are born again, your inheritance in Christ, your joy in Christ, then you have tampered with it. I declare, I declare, let your inheritance, let it be restored in the name of Jesus. Let it be restored, 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 let it be restored. First King 13 verse 6. The king's are wither as a result of his error. The king are wither as a result of his sin. The king are wither. As a result of his mistake. But if I cease, the hand was restored back. Every one of you that you have your health issue right now, 
And that earth issue, that earth issue was as a result, started as a result of your mistake, your error, your sin, your disobedience. I declare, I declare by the mercy of God, let there be restoration in the name of Jesus. Let your healing come forth. Let there be restoration. Let your healing come forth. Let there be restoration. Let your healing come forth. In the name of Jesus. Second King 4, 35. The Shunammite woman was restored back to death. The Shunammite woman lost her son, but the son was restored back. Every one of your parents that you have lost your child to the world, that you have lost your child to the world, that child will not listen, that child will not hear, and it's a tears of pain. You know that you have lost that child to the world. I decree, like declare, like a prodigal son, let that child be restored back home in the name of Jesus. Let him be restored. 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 Proverbs says that one. Another level. The Bible says, if a thief was caught, he must restore seven food and everything in his house. Is Exodus 22 first one. Either restore four, either restore five, either restore double. But in Proverbs 6, that one, it says every, the thief must restore his seven food or everything in his house. Every good thing that the enemy has taken from you, everything that the enemy has stolen from you, tonight let there be seven fold restoration in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 57, verse 18. Isaiah 57, verse 18. The Lord said, will restore your comfort. Your comfort shall be restored unto you. Your comfort, your comfort, your comfort, your comfort, your comfort, your comfort. In that marriage, in that business, in that career, what's supposed to be giving you joy, but now they're not giving you joy. I decree, I declare, let your comfort be restored back in the name of Jesus. Receive your comfort back. In that marriage, receive your comfort back. In that marriage, receive your comfort back. In that marriage, receive your joy back. Let your joy be restored back in the name of Jesus. Jeremiah 30, verse 17. He said, I will restore earth unto you, and I will heal your wound. I will restore earth unto you, and I will heal your wound. I decree, I declare, every one of you with earth issue, let God restore back your earth in the name of Jesus. Any one of you that has sustained injury, internal injury, external injury, spiritual injury, emotional injury, let God heal you in the name of Jesus. Joy 2.25 said, the year which the wasters and the destroyers that wasted the year that they have destroyed shall be restored back. Every year, all the years we should have labor, but the enemy did not allow you to enjoy that labor. I decree, I declare, let, take, let that be restoration in the name of Jesus. Oh, I'm seeing a woman here. I believe this, my sister is in the house. Oh, good, 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 good. I declare, I declare, let there be restoration in the name of Jesus. Let there be restoration. Let there be restoration. The years which the wasters, which the destroyers have destroyed, have wasted your life. Let it be restored back in the name of Jesus. Let it be restored back. 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 In the name of Jesus. Mark 3, verse 5. Mark 3, verse 5. The man with a lame hand, his hand was restored. The hand represents the work of your hand. Every one of you, that your hands spiritually have been paralyzed. The work of your hand has been paralyzed. I decree, I declare. Let the glory of your hand, the glory of your hand, the glory of your work, the glory of your business, let it be restored in the name of Jesus. Mark 8, 25. The blind man, his sight was restored. Every one of you before, you used to see very well spiritually. Before anything will happen, God will reveal to you. But now, you don't see nothing. I declare, I declare, your spiritual side, let it be restored back in the name of Jesus. Galatians says, verse 1. Galatians says, verse 1. The Bible says, anyone that backslides, those in faith must encourage him and restore him back. Any of our family member that has backslide, any of our family member that today they are out of faith, we join our faith together, we decree, we declare, we petition heaven concerning them this second half of the year. Let God restore them back in the name of Jesus. Every husband, any husband in the house, that any woman in the house, that your husband is no longer in faith this second half of the year, let God restore him in the name of Jesus. Every husband in the house, 
that your wife is no longer in fit. Let God restore her in the name of Jesus. Every parent that your children are no longer in fit, as you go into the second half of the year, I decree, I declare, let heaven restore our children in the name of Jesus. Let there be restoration. Let there be restoration. Let there be restoration. Let there be restoration in the name of Jesus. As you go into the second half of the year, I declare, I declare, let the Lord God restore your life. Let God restore your joy. Let God restore your strength. Let God restore your hope. Let God restore your strength. Let God restore your health. Let God restore your joy. Let God restore your glory. Let God restore your finance. Every good thing that must be restored for you to enjoy life, for your money to be peace, for your business to move forward. I declare, I declare, let God restore them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. Blessed be your holy name. We therefore declare this second half of the year. We declare it open in the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And according to the word of the Lord, I declare, I declare, according to the word of the Lord in 2 Kings 8, verse 5, the king appointed an officer, the angels of God, the angels of restoration, that will join him with you, that will join him with you, sir, that will join him with you, man, in order for that restoration to be full. I declare, I declare, let God release that angel of restoration in the name of Jesus. Throughout the second half of the year, the angels that will work with you shall be angels of restoration. I know you are your man. I said throughout the second half of the year, the angels that will work with you shall be angels of restoration in the name of Jesus. She will not be opposed. Thank you, mighty Father. Blessed be your name. For in Jesus' name we are praying. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Say, recover all. Can we shout it three all time? Say, I recover all. I recover all. I recover all. Shout it three all time. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord will recover all for you in the name of Jesus. And every one of you, God is using to partner with us, with your seed, with your tithe, with your offering. Every one of you that God is using you to support this work. As you go into this second half of the year, I decree, I declare, the Lord will perfect that which concerns you in the name of Jesus. As God is using you to partner with us, as God is using you to support this work, everything that concerns you, the Lord will raise men and women for you in the name of Jesus. That your business, the Lord will raise men and women for you. That your career, the Lord will raise men and women for you. That proposal, the Lord will favor you. I said the Lord will favor you. I said the Lord will favor you. The Lord will favor you. The Lord will favor you. In the name of Jesus. And if you are online, you are saying, Pastor, you cannot pray for these five days and I will not support this work. Wow, that's good. That's encouraging. You are welcome in the name of Jesus. You are on Facebook, you are on YouTube, you see the account data there. It's a GT account, GTB Bank, 77 Or just send a message to plus 234-807-6268-6255. Plus 234-807-6268-6255. Let's not forget, pray avalanche, the six continue today. 12 noon Nigeria time. As you go into the remaining hours this night, may the angels of God for restoration, may they start with their work in our life, may they start their work in our home, may they start their work in our marriage, may they start in their work. Those of you with health issues, tonight, 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 before we come back for prayer avalanche, may you have testimony in the name of Jesus. So shall he be. In Jesus' name we are praying. I say in Jesus' name we are praying. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. See you by the grace of God during prayer avalanche day six. The Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Dear father, mother, uncle, auntie, married, single, boy, girl, man woman, brother, sister, and friend. You and I will one day leave this world and our spirit will appear on the other side. Will you be allowed to enter heaven? The only way to enter heaven is to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and walk in righteousness. If you have not given your life to Jesus or you once did and you backslid it, you started living in sin, please say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart 
that you died for me and on the third day you rose again that I might be free from sin. Right now, I confess you as my Lord and personal Savior. Forgive me my sins and wash me with your blood. Make me your child and write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Sin and Satan has no more power over my life. In Jesus' mighty name, it's a new day. Amen and amen. God bless you.